doesn't know how lucky he was when he won that toss and didn't have to go on the cattle drive. I don't care if I never drive cattle again. Yeah, sure dusty. Dusty? I got enough dirt in my mouth to plant corn in. Well, wash it out with this. Thanks. I'll wash it out with something better than water. I wonder what's keeping pot. That's a lot of money. Yep, and all for taxes. Half death and taxes. Stop complaining. I'm just complaining about the dirt in my mouth. Well, here it is. $10,000 drawn on Wells Fargo Company. Now, I've already endorsed it. Isn't that kind of dangerous? I mean, anybody could cash it now. Well, maybe it is, but we've got to get this money to the territorial tax office before noon on Saturday, and we've also got to get to the Double C Ranch before they sell off all that good stock. All right, who makes the trip to Genoa? Well, Adam, uh, you know all about our tax setup. I accept. I'd much rather ride to Genoa than drive that breeding stock up through those mountains. Yeah, well, who wouldn't? I think we ought to toss on it, Pa. No, no, it's all settled. Adam, I guess you'd better get started right away. Yep, won't be safe in there. Now, remember, you've got till the day after tomorrow, no longer. I'll see you in about four days. Johnny! Johnny, quick! You sound like it was something important, Jim. It is. Another prison break. How many this time? Two. Got away early this morning. Now, we want you to wire all town marshals and sheriffs in a 100-mile area. Ask them to organize posses. All right, Jeff. I hope you catch them. Always do. But these two are tough hombres. They're hold-up men and they're killers. <laughs> be the place. I can't drag that chain another foot. Ah, uh, this is it, all right. Uh, as soon as Brubaker gets here with those horses, we'll hey, be all the way to break. get the chisel to break these blasted oh, chains. Nah, he won't. He won't. He won't. Uh, well, you're betting a lot on him. Lousy prison guard. Well, he may be a lousy prison guard, but he helped us escape. He uh, set that chase going in the wrong direction. Oh, well, he'll be here, all right. <sighs> Maybe. Drooling for that money. <laughs> well, see you boys made it all right. Yeah, we made it. Where's the horses? Yeah, where's the chisel to break these chains? I risked enough letting you escape and setting a false trail. Any more than that, make the odds too high. Too high for who, Brubaker? For me. Come on, Trace. Where's the money? It's all you care about, the money? That 5,000 you got buried, now where is it? Well, all right. There's really nothing we can do about it, Point Dexter. No. You want it or not? Well, where is it? Right here, Brubaker. There's 
stupid prison guy. <laughs> he fell for it, Trace. You kill me, would you, Trace? Get out of those clothes quick. I escaped, Trace, didn't I? Oh, didn't I? Mm hmm. I'm going to give you a chance to go back and tell that warden just how you did it. Get out of those clothes quick. I'd kill you. It's only close enough for you, Trace. How about me? Uh, there's a little town named Bowleg a few miles from here. We'll get you fixed up there. Oh, come on, Sheriff. Come on. What's the hold up anyway? Let's get this whole thing over with. Waiting for Henry Neighbors. And Billy McCord. If I didn't let that boy come along, he'd quit. But I sure hate leaving my stables untended. Look, Townsend, you don't have to go if you don't want to. We're short-handed, what with the roundup and all. Oh, I'll go. But I'm sure getting tired of these blind chases. Whole town is. Oh, quit complaining. Think of the business I'm losing, having to close down my gambling tables and all. And five will get you 50, we come back with nothing but saddle sores. I'm only doing what the territorial governor expects us to do. Let's go get him, Sheriff. Sure would like to have me a couple of convicts, scalps. Put that thing away before I take it away from you. Okay, kids, settle down now. We're waiting for Henry Neighbors. Could you finish cleaning out all them stalls? Yeah. You throw a hay in them? Yes, I threw hay in him. Hey, Sheriff, ain't that going to get me a badge? Yeah, you'll get a badge against my better judgment. Hey, here comes old Turkey Neck. Henry? Henry? You got your slicker? It might rain. Remember, you caught a bad cold last time you went out with the boys. I have it, Martha. Your handkerchief? Yes, Chef. Uh, you think I'm she's going along with us? <laughs> I won't, Martha. Hey, come on, old man. Them convicts ain't going to wait for us. I'm uh, sorry I had to call on you again, Henry. All right. Here, let me take that. You'll stick yourself and bleed all over your clean shirt. Thank you, Martha. I'll be with you in just a minute, Sheriff. Well, if we're going, let's get moving. Well, there's gloves in the saddle roll, Henry. All right. Goodbye, Martha. Goodbye, Henry. And, Henry, I ain't worried about you running into them criminals, but don't fall off the horse. I won't, Martha. Goodbye. Goodbye, Henry. Yeah, I'll hold and you get on. All right, thank you. Thank you, Martha. Come on. Bye, Henry. Goodbye. Come on! Uh, get off. Let's give the horse time to rest a little bit. Listen, Trace, these chains, we gotta be smart and keep moving. Posse will be combing the whole territory for us. For us? Well, yeah. Well, you wouldn't, Trace. I, I mean, after us busting out together and everything. Here's where we part company. Now, you'd slow me down. Horse can't make any time riding double. Oh, you can't. You move off over there about 20 feet. Move. Far well, enough. Now, here I'm going to leave you this rifle. Now, if you get in any real trouble now, you use it. Good luck, Porn Dexter. Trace! Please!
Mister. Now get down off that horse. You heard me. Get down. Just unbuckle that gun belt. Throw it all out in front of you. Now get the shuck in them clothes. You heard me. To save some of that. You sound just like your wife. Yeah, well, we got no chance to find anybody in all this country. Criminals don't come this way anyhow. Maybe not, but we gotta try. He could come this way. Put that thing away. You know something, Sheriff? I got a feeling. I got a feeling I'm gonna get my first notch. Put it away. Yes, sir. -y. How you doing, Henry? You feel you can make a few more miles? Yeah, sure. Don't worry about me. Well, come on, then. Don't hit me no more. Please, don't hit me no more. No, no, please don't hit me no more. Please, please, please. Yeah, take it easy, old timer. Please. I'm not gonna hit you. Here, let's have no, a look at that. No, come on, come no, on. Please, please. That doesn't seem to be too serious. Let's see if we can get you over there on that cot. Get on your feet. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah. 
You ain't gonna hit me. Please, please. Come on, now. You're gonna be all right, don't you? You just sit right down there. There you go. See if that doesn't make you feel a little better, huh? How many of you broke out of prison? I mean, the clothes, they're not mine. If you come here looking for your friend, he's been and gone. Right there's his leg irons, if and you don't believe me. How long has he been gone? Well, I told you, he just left. Listen, uh, my name is Cartwright, Adam Cartwright. You see, this fellow drew From down on me, he took my... From way. Why, sure, I know your pa well. But what you doing in them there duds? Well, like I was saying, this fellow that hit you drew down on me and he took my horse and my clothes and... Well, I want to catch him, but quick. Now, I could use one of your horses and maybe some clothes and a gun if you got one. How come you want to go after a dangerous hombre like that? Well, it just so happened that there was a bank draft in my saddle pocket, about $10,000 worth, and I mean to get it back. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I ain't got no clothes for you, but the horse and gun you can have. That is, if that other fella didn't take it, no. No, no, here it is. He didn't find it. It's here, all right. Here you are. Listen, do you uh, think maybe you could get to the nearest town and uh, maybe alert the sheriff there? <laughs> That'd be bow legs, and, and don't you worry none. I can make it. A crack on the head don't hurt an old desert rat like me. Good. Come on, now, we better saddle you up a horse and quick, huh? Sure, give me a start there. Why, why, you're one of them guards from the prison. Now, the convict got away in one of your horses, huh? Well, don't worry, old man. I'll get it back for you. Uh, that weren't the way it was at all. I'd give it to him. You'd give him your horse? Yeah, because a convict made him change clothes and stole his horse. And that real convict, he came here and made me take off his chains, and he, and he hit me on the head right here. Oh, who's this other fella? Adam Cartwright. I know his whole family. And, and Adam, he went after that there convict to get his horse and saddle back. Well, he's just got to. He's got to? Huh? Why? Because there's a bank draft in that there saddle pocket. And a big one. A bank draft? Well, it's uh, the same as money, ain't it? You know how much? Ten thousand dollars, he said. And I'm riding to the town for help, right now. Uh-uh. Get in the house, old man. Come on. Another two hours and we'll fry in our own grease. Ah, you slob! What's the matter with you? Yeah, it'll be hot, all right. That's why the convicts have never come this way. 
Mm. What's the matter? You don't like my coffee? Well, you know, maybe we should have brought along old Martha to do it for you. She, uh, she button your shoes, don't she? If this is the best you could do, maybe we should have brought her. Well, she'd be safe enough. We're always getting up posses, but we don't ever catch nobody. Well, I got me a feeling this time. You got a feeling. Well, I got a feeling. We don't get nothing for catching them, and it's 20 to 1. Another, another posse's already caught them down by the border. We got to look. Why? Every day I'm away from my business, it costs me business. <laughs> you call that tin horn gambling join a business? Now, you shut up, stable boy. Get back to your shovel. I'll kill you. You ever say that again, I'll kill you. Cord, put that gun down. I said, put it down. You saw that, Sheriff. You saw that. Don't ever ask me to go riding possibly with you oh, again. Shut up. Shut up, all of you. Stop all this jawway. We got enough to do without quarreling amongst ourselves. And you, McCord, you pull that gun again without reason, and I'll take it away from you. Somebody put out that fire. Let's get back in the saddle. <clears throat> Looks like I'm going to get my first notch. You shut up and keep still. Come from over there. Got time for a drink of water, Sheriff? My mouth's kind of dry. Those mine. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on, poke your head up again. I'll knock it off.
glad to see you. Well, there's your prisoner. He uh, waylaid me back down the road there and made me change clothes with him. Take off your gun belt. You don't understand. The man escaped from your prison and uh, he stopped me back there. Take off your gun belt. Turn around. Make a mistake, mister. My name's Cartwright. Well, what's all this about? Get over by that tree. You stay put. Howdy. Howdy. Where you from, Sheriff? I'm Hill from Bowlegs, looking for convicts. I guess we got one. We got two. I'm Brubaker, territorial prison. Which one's he? It's Elmer Trace. Sheriff, that is not right. My name is Adam Cartwright. Shut up. I'll keep him shut. Now, you listen to me, Sheriff. I am no convict. Shut your mouth. I want to get this thing straightened out. I'm not Elmer Trace. I said shut up. Go ahead. Go ahead, hit me. I sure would like to kill you. McCord, take it easy. Why, he's a lousy convict. He just killed a man a few minutes ago. What do you expect me to do, hold his hand? Take it easy, I say. We'll hear your story a little later. I hear this Elmer Trace is a real hard character. Oh, who do you think that dead man is over there? Don't know. It's his partner. You mean he killed his partner? They probably waylaid some poor devil and then got into a quarrel about who's going to wear his clothes and ride his horse. Well, Sheriff, sure, shouldn't we uh, search the prisoner or, or something? Yeah, I was going to do that. Take those, will you? Yeah. It's terrible. Terrible. Killing and robbing. You like lawn? Well, like what? Being a lawman, going on posses and all. Boy, I sure would. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I just love it. Running after some gun-happy convict with maggots where his brains ought to be. Waiting for him to bushwhack you. Yeah, I like it all right. Yeah, well, don't worry. He's going to get his. They're going to hang him. Will they? Judges and jury, all that, huh? Search him good, Sheriff. I know these prisoners, they got knives and all kinds of things hidden on them. Well, there ain't nothing on this one. I want to ask you some questions. We already know all the answers. Where'd you get that gun? From an old prospector, a little ways back. What was his name? I don't know. You borrow a gun from a man, you don't know his name? Well, I'd have to tell you the whole story, or you won't believe any of it. We ain't gonna believe none of it anyhow. I'm still waiting to hear where you got that gun. Hey. There ain't nobody around here faster than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're pretty fast with that thing, kid. Well, I practice all the time. What do you do when you're not practicing? I work for Mr. Townsend in his livery stable. Oh. What a shame. A man of your ability 
What I really want to be is a, a deputy. Full-time deputy. Hmm. Are you through with him? Search him? Yeah, nothing on him. Mm. He'll set the time across the saddle. To get them good clothes. Oh, well, he obviously killed somebody for him. Them rotten murders. What do you suppose they'll do with him? Oh, he'll get five years, maybe less. Five years, maybe less for murder? All he needs is a good lawyer. There ought to be something we can do about it. Maybe there is. We'll be right with you. Yeah. I tell you, Sheriff, I'm not a convict. Shut up, cowboy. We've heard enough out of you. Ted will get you 40. You've done this before. Let's get this over with. Oh, no, McCord, you ain't gonna do that. I ain't asking, Sheriff. I said we're gonna hang him. I don't want another chirp out of you, boy. They never take him in alive. You know how they take them in? Tied across the saddle. That's right. Let's go. Hold it! I'll kill the first man that puts a rope on him. This man here ain't worth taking in alive. What kind of a law officer are you, anyway? He's law man enough to know that, that no jury is going to hang him. They're going to turn him loose. That's for a jury to decide, not us. Man has a right to prove his innocence. Now, if you take me back to Genoa, you'll find that people back there know me. I say we string him up. I've had enough of you. Shut up! Give me that rope, kid. I tell you what this man is doing here. He's stalling for time. It's a long way to Genoa. A lot can happen between here and there. He's right. Why don't you listen to him? All right, Sheriff. The prospector. The man that gave me the gun. Now, he lives only half a dozen miles from here. Take me back there. He knows me. That's all I ask is a chance. You men want him on your conscience? Well, I don't. All right, mister, that's what you get, a chance. Get him on the horse and let's go. Serious about wanting to take a job, Lon? Sure I am. I want that badge. That'll stop them. Stop who? Everybody's laughing at me behind my back. I know they do it. But that's why I'm gonna get him. Easy, easy. You know, I don't want that killer taken back alive. You help me, I'll help you.
The old fellow's dead. I can't believe it. Go have a look. Not you. Caught right. You're Trace, aren't you? Mm-hmm. You know what I want. <laughs> they won't believe you. They want to hang you. Oh, the sheriff ain't going to be able to stop them. Would you hand me that little bank draft? I'll stop them. Now, I got nothing to lose. That's good enough for me. I say we hang him right now. Well, it's what I've been telling you all along. Guess we should have listened to the kid. It's still not too late. You still holding out? I'm against it. I'm against it, and so is Hill. Hill, come on out here. You try to stop us, I'll see you lose your job. Don't you threaten me, Townsend. I ain't taking that kind of talk. Well, now, if you don't want in on it, take a little walk till it's over. Unbuckle that gun belt and drop it. He was asking for it. Now there ain't nothing stopping us. It's your last chance. Change your mind. You just let me know. Stop! Stop or I'll shoot! There ain't gonna be no hanging. It ain't right. No, no, you take your hands away from that gun. Doesn't mean I won't shoot you, too. I don't know how to handle this, but the sheriff will know what he comes to. Now, you, you go on, get back to the shack and take him inside. Go on, hurry. Go on, hurry. I swear, you come any closer and I'll shoot. Easy, easy. Watch his eyes. You stay where you are, do you hear? I'm not fooling him. You stay there or I'll shoot. Relax it now. Go on, hurry. Thank you for what you've done, neighbors. You sure surprised me. Just keep that handkerchief pressed against the wound and the bleeding will stop. I'll get you to a doctor as soon as we get out of this mess. Why didn't you show me this bank draft before? I suspected the guard was Trace. I'd given you the draft then, he'd have killed you for it. How did Trace know that you had it? Well, I guess the prospector told him before he killed him. How you doing, Mr. Neighbors? Weak. Well, you lost a lot of blood. It's beginning to hurt, too. Think you're strong enough to guard that window? I think so. Are you going to make an hold this door? Maybe. Skidmore, that back window. Somebody's trying to sneak around the back. Neighbors is watching that back window. Good. As long as they think that back window's being watched, they're not going to try to leave. What do you set wagon over there? The wagon? It's a ram. 
A little around that door, huh? Hey, McCord! Come here, I want to talk. Go ahead, talk to him, kid. Make sure he doesn't open that door. What do you want, Hill? You're making a mistake, McCord. I know what I'm doing. This fella here is Adam Cartwright. Not gonna work. I can prove it. Lift up the tongue. That fella you think's a prison guard is Elmer Trace. I think you're lying. I think you got a gun pointed at that stupid sheriff of ours. That's right, kid. Keep talking to him. Hey, Hill? Hey, Hill, you tell neighbors. You tell him I could have shot him through any eyes if I'd have wanted. Okay. Kid. Oh, Hill. We're coming in after him. Okay, we'll push it from back. Shoot the first man that comes through. Come on, Come on. gonna get off easy, didn't you? I'll get the rope. You too, Sheriff. All right, kid, back over here. Townsend, Skidmore, drop your guns. to get me $10,000, kid. Cartwright's got a bank draft that's worth that much. Now, you in with me, huh? 50-50? Partners? It's that or you're dead. You lied to me. Ah! No! Stupid! Come on, get over there, Chef. All right, Cartwright. And now you don't care much for Junior here. You don't come up with that bank draft. This future lawman is dead. Let the boy go, Trace. I'll give you the draft. He was a lawman. I made a big mistake. Well, you didn't make the mistake you nearly could have made. All of you. And you fellas don't have to worry about being called for posse duty again. You'd better find a way to thank Henry Neighbors. Now put him on a horse and get him to a doctor. Yeah. 
Yeah, let me get him. Here, Mr. Neighbors. Take this one with you. I've known these men for years. Strange which one turned out to be the real man. Yeah. I hope I see you again. Good pleasure, Sheriff. mighty good on paper, but I think I'd like to see it close up again. All right. Father, you've seen that lumber a dozen times. Do you think Mr. Cartwright chopped it down since the last time you saw it? <laughs> now, Susan, you know better than that. <laughs> Susan, your boy has a perfect right to see that timberland again if he wants to before he buys it. He sure has. Mr. Blanchard, we have a wagon down at the Liberty Stable. I can drive you up whenever you want to go. Oh, that's a good idea. What about it, Susan? Would you like to come along? I'd love it. Good. Boy, you, you got a bunch to do. Won't you let me drive? Oh, you can't drive with that bad arm. Honey, with one arm, I can drive better than 90% of the people in this town. Yeah, that isn't the way you were talking when we drove into town. <laughs> I guess you make oh, up. Oh, look. Look. Look at that horse. A real miracle maker. Why don't you ask him to heal that shoulder of yours? Oh. I don't believe in them fellas, Susan. Run out of that snake oil and they're finished. Size of my old shoulder's about well anyhow. You're very fortunate to be able to laugh at your troubles. That your injury can mend. There are others not so fortunate. Are you, uh, Mr. Gard? I am what the young lady laughingly referred to as the miracle maker. If your shoulder doesn't mend, perhaps I can help you. Oh, my goodness. Do you think I hurt his feelings? No, don't pay me any attention, Susan. Well, if we're going to look at that timber, we'd better be on our way. Yeah. Right now. Oh, we'll be back in about an hour. Oh, don't, don't hurry now. I'll take care of the supplies down to the store. And take it easy with these people. I don't want you dumping up prospective customers in a ditch somewhere. No. Why don't you let me drive horses? It's such a lovely day, and I want to give us a real exciting ride. I don't know, Susie. These old horses have been spooked all day. Oh, come on, horse, please. Better not argue with a horse. When she's in this kind of mood, she can't win. I don't want my head caved in, too. Yeah. What is it, Jeff? What's the matter? It's not an accident. just a little tired of hearing you say that over and over and over again. And let me tell you something. It was an accident. It could have happened no matter who was driving. Now, you've just got to stop eating your heart out. I appreciate your concern. I know how you feel. But you can't take the whole responsibility on your own shoulders. <laughs> if, if, if we were to start feeling responsible for everything that happened in life, why, how could we live? Yeah, I reckon you're right, Paul. But Susan don't understand that. I'm gonna ride out there. Dr. Moore's got that specialist out there today, and I wanna see what he's got to say. Fine. Fine. 
I'll ride out with you. But remember, it was an accident. What'd you find out, Doc? I examined Miss Blanchard very carefully. The bruises and lacerations are healing quite well. What about her legs, Doctor? Will my niece walk again? I can only confirm what Dr. Moore has already said. I can find nothing wrong with her legs. But, but Doc, if there ain't nothing wrong with her legs, how come she can't walk? Dr. Moore, isn't there somebody else we could call in? Someone from New York, maybe? Celia, Dr. Gross is the finest man in the country in this field. Thank you. Is there another stage today? I should get back to San Francisco as quickly as possible. Yes, there's a stage late this afternoon. Let me make you all some tea before you leave. You're very kind. Is it all right if I go in here and see her? Go ahead. Hi, Susie. Doctor said I could come in and see you a minute. It's kind of dark in here, don't you? Do you want me to lift one of these shades? Leave them alone, Hoss. I like it this way. All right. This way you like it. Doctor says you, you're doing real good. It'll be up in no time. I know what the doctor said, Hoss. Well, his ain't the last word, Susie. The, there's lots of other doctors. I'm tired of doctor's horse. Tired of all that probing and poking. And all for nothing. Susie, you, you can't talk like that. You can't just give up. You know it, horse, and I know it. I'm never going to walk again. Oh, if, if that ain't the dead burnest bunch of foolishness I ever heard in my life, well, we get a doctor can find out what's ailing you, you're gonna be as good as new and up in no time. My father's dead, Hoss. My father's dead. All because of my foolishness. Susie, you, you, you can't keep on blaming yourself for that, and no more than I can. My Paul says if people go through life blaming themselves for everything that happens, well, life just ain't, ain't worth living. It isn't. Now you listen to me. Horse, I don't want to listen to anyone anymore. Just leave me be. Please. We're going to find a way, Susie. I promise you, we're going to find a way. Doing all they can, Hoss. You two fellows are doctors. You ought to know what to do. But we're only doctors, not miracle makers, only human beings. We honestly don't know what's wrong with Susan. Maybe we never will. Maybe whatever it is will gradually disappear. We just don't know. You just don't know. And you're doctors. What good are you? Hoss. It's all right, Ben. Your nerves are all riled up since the accident, Hoss. You know, I think you feel guilty. Sometimes guilt makes people feel edgy. That's exactly what's wrong with Susan right now. She blames herself for her pa's death. As Dr. Moore said, guilt affects the mind strangely. Doctor. Do you think perhaps Susan doesn't want to walk? Perhaps. But the mind is a strange world in itself. 
Maybe someday it will be as important to treat the mind as we try to treat the body today. I don't know about this kind of talk. All I know is we've got to figure out some way to help Susan. We can be patient, hope, and pray. That'll be a great comfort to her. I know. I wish there was something else we could give her. Now I really must be going. Boss, would you uh, drive Dr. Gross and Dr. Moore into town? I've got to get back to the ranch if Miss Celia can give me a horse. Oh, help yourself, Ben. Bye, Miss Celia. Miss Celia? First meeting. From this small group, the believers will grow. And I'm sure that by the time I leave, this humble meeting place will not be able to contain them all. Then, friends, take heed and listen to my message. For my power will grow. The knowledge of my power will grow and magnify. And then the faithful shall be healed. Why not now? You talk about helping people. Help me. Who are you, my unfortunate friend? Poor man who can't make a living for himself anymore. And what has happened to you? Oh, about five years ago, a bronc throwed me. I've been like this ever since. Drifting, living through the grace of handouts. Unable to get my leg up over a horse at a pile of hay in the stable. You with your fancy words of faith and cures. You tell me there's hope for someone like me? What hope is there for you? I have seen the troubles that have been handed down to the Son of Man to be exercised in their life. I have seen the woes, the tribulations, the despairs which have been heaped on the head of all mankind. They have all cried to me for help, for a miracle. What is it that you want from me, a candy-coated cloud, a tomorrow's paradise? I want to be able to walk upright again. I want to work again. How much do you want it? For your cure stands here before you. If you believe in me, you can be cured. Some who have sown in tears have reaped in joy. And the lame have walked, the blind have seen, and the deaf have heard. And me. Help me. Do you believe in me? Do you have faith in me? Yes. I believe. Oh, then, my friend, as I lay my hands on you now, believe in me, trust in me, open your soul, open your heart to me. Believe in me, and your body will straighten. Have faith in me, and you will walk upright again. Straighten your body. Five years since my fall. Five years of drifting around and begging for handouts, and now I can walk. You hear that, friend? Five long years, now I can walk! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Garth, could I talk to you, sir? What about Finn? That crippled fellow, you just, you just help. I'd, I'd like to talk to you about him if I could. Come with me to my hotel. Susie. 
Susie, it's me, Horse. I know. I heard you talking to Aunt Celia. Susie, there's, there's something I gotta talk to you about. Another doctor. No, 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 it, it ain't a doctor, but it's a fellow that's liable to be able to help you. I just want to be left alone. Susie, you gotta listen to me. This fellow's liable to really be able to help you. Horse, go away. Please go away. Susie, just listen to me for a minute. It's about this fellow named Garth. Garth? You mean that man in town, the faith healer? Susie, he's, he's sure enough, he's helped people. I saw him cure an old cowboy that was all stove up and bent and crooked from a fall. He, he made him stand up straight and walk again. Susie, it can't do no harm to talk to him. I told you I don't want to talk to anyone. Feeling guilty about your paw again, ain't you? Susie, I... I feel guilty about you. I reckon it's just something we'll have to live with the rest of our lives. Horse? Horse, I don't want you to suffer. It was all my fault. Will it make you feel better if I... See this man? Susie. Anything that'll help you make me feel better. I, I just want you to talk to him, that's all. All right. I'll talk to him, Horace. I don't know about this, Horse. I, I just don't know. But, Miss Celia, I done told you I talked to Susan and she wants to see him. I was under the impression that you'd explain this to the young lady's family, Mr. Cartwright. I'm sorry, madam. I hadn't intended forcing my way in. Just a minute. Miss Celia, you do want to help Susan, don't you? You don't want to see her lay in there in that room the rest of her life. Oh, Horse, you know I don't, but this kind of thing... Well, ma'am, what harm can it do? We've already tried everything else. I beg your pardon, Mr. Garth. I didn't mean to be rude. Susan wants to see you. Naturally, you can see her. Thank you. Where is she? No, that ring. Go on, I'll show you. All right. If you don't mind. Don't open the blinds. I want it dark. Do not be afraid of the light. I am Garth. I am here to help you. Oh, that's wonderful, Horst. <laughs> I'll tell you, they had a bunch of them. It was one of the funniest minstrel shows I've ever seen. Oh, I wish I could have been there. <laughs> oh, Horst, I hadn't even asked you about your arm. How is it? Oh, it's fine, Susan. I'll be out of this rig in a couple of days, I reckon. You're the one that counts. How are you feeling? How are you getting along? Oh, Garth says that I'm making marvelous progress. Well, it's been a couple of weeks. Oh, well, Garth tells me it won't be much longer. He thinks I'm doing beautifully. Well, Susie, it's, it's you that I'm interested in. How, how do you feel? Well, I feel wonderful. Every day I seem to get more confidence. Oh, before the summer is over, Hoss, I'm going to walk again. Good. You moving your feet or legs or anything? No. But Garth says that it happens all at once when I have complete faith in him. Yeah. It appears to me like you've got plenty of faith in him already. Oh, I do. But I guess I just don't have enough, do I? Well, good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Garth? Uh, Susan. Oh, I'm sorry, Hoss, but I... I've got to go to work now. Oh, I'll run along. I'll see you later. Well, before you go, Mr. Cartwright, Susan is entering a very critical phase of her treatment. It might help her if you didn't see her for a while. 
Mr. Garth. Susie and me have been friends for a long, long time. What possible harm could it be me coming to see her? Well, Susan and I are entering a period of intense concentration. Any influence outside, no matter how friendly, would tend to destroy that concentration. It might slow down her recovery. Tend to make it impossible altogether. I'm sure you understand. Susie, is, is that the way you want it? You want me to come back? Well, it's... If Mr. Garth wants it, if he thinks it's best... I'm afraid I do, Susan. I think it's vital. That's the way it'll be, then. I'll see you later, Susan. Well, it won't be for long. I'll send for you. Bye. Goodbye, Mr. Cartwright. Goodbye, Hoss. You must have faith in me, Susan. Faith so complete and absolute that it fills every portion of your being and leaves no room for the slightest shred of doubt. Do you have faith in me, Susan? Yes. Yes, I do. Do you have such unquestioning faith that you will do exactly as I say, simply because I say it? Yes, Garth. Well, what's the matter, Garth? There seems to be a limit to your faith. Oh, no, there isn't. No, there isn't. I have the most complete faith in you. You think you do, but you've never had complete faith before, so how can you possibly know what it's like? Well, I'm trying as hard as I can. There's something in there, something like a barrier that's holding you back, something like a dam, something we must remove if you're to be cured. Well, I'm not aware of it. But it's there. Removing it will take an even greater effort on your part. You've, you've given so much of your time to me. There are so many others you could be helping. Maybe I shouldn't keep you to myself anymore. You're an unusual woman, Susan. Lovely of face and form. And most important, so unselfish. Thank you. You know, I've never seen you smile before. In the world, I see there's little enough to smile at. Wretchedness, poverty of spirit. Garth, if you feel you ought to move on, I'd understand. No, we've made too much progress to stop now. There's one last effort you can make if you're willing to try it. I'll try anything if it will only make me walk again. I think what is needed to... To break the barrier that preventing your cure is an act of blind, unquestioning faith. An act by which... An act by which you place yourself completely in my hand. When you have put yourself in a position where you must trust me, where you must have faith in me, then and only then can you be cured. What do you want me to do? I thought. I'll tell you when I've decided. Well, I got your message. What do you want? I want to talk to you. Well, make it fast. Will you have to get back in the house? I've been working here for two weeks and you haven't told me a thing. I want to know what's going on. Look, I told you repeatedly, my ways are my own. And I told you I ain't leaving without part of that money. What money? Oh, now, don't treat me like one of your stupid followers. I know how rich that girl is and I know you're planning on getting some of it and I want my share. You made a mistake, Thorne. This girl is sensitive. She's an intelligent, unusual girl. I'm going to do everything I can to help her. Poppycock. You've been preaching for so long, you're starting to believe your own words. Well, if you don't agree with my words, maybe it's time you left. Oh, no. You're not getting rid of me. I'm staying for this one. And it better not be too long. Who 
Who is it? Garth, may I come in? Yes, of course. I spoke to you about an act of faith this morning, Susan. Yes? Well, I've been thinking about it ever since. Oh, so have I. And I've been worrying about it. Well, you shouldn't worry about it, Susan. I'd hoped you were looking forward to it for a chance to express yourself in one of the most beautiful of all basic human emotions. I never thought of it that way. It sounded more like a test. What do you want me to do? Susan, I... I want you to marry me. Am I presuming too far? I... I don't know. It's just that I never thought anyone would want to marry me the way I am. Perhaps this will help you have faith in me. Faith that I'll be able to kill you. But it's all so mechanical. I always thought that I would marry because of love. But faith and love are but two sides of the same coin. One cannot exist without the other. But underneath all those words, Garth, aren't you asking me to marry you so that I can walk again? No. Garth, that, that wouldn't be right. Susan, I'm asking you to marry me because I love you. Susan, please, marry me. Don't you see I need you as much as you need me? God, you, you need me. A little bit tighter, will you? I said a little bit tighter. I notice you're not going over to Susan Blanchard's every day now. Have you heard how things are going? Well, I decided I'd stay away for a while. As long as that Garth helps Susan, that's all I care about. Well, she sure got a lot of faith in him. Uh, reckon she should. He's done her a lot of good, Joe. Done a lot of folks some good. Have you seen that Thorn ride lately? Ain't nobody rides any better than he does. Yeah, I've seen him. Rides awful good for a man who hasn't been on horseback for five years. Maybe a little bit too good. What are you driving at? Everybody's always taking a dig at Garth. Yeah, maybe you're right. Just a feeling I have. Oh, Hoss. One of the Blanchard ranchmen just rode by. I had a message for you. What sort of message? Susan wants to see you. Hey, you don't reckon she's, you don't reckon she's walking? No, I, I don't know. It didn't say anything about that. Yeah. Sure, just might be. I better get over there. I'm sorry I ever taught you how to braid these things. You've been braiding them since you were five years old. Oh, horse, it's so good to see you. Susan, good afternoon, Mr. Cartwright. Just a few days ago that you asked me not to come back. What's happened? We have news for you. A surprise? Might be. Susan has consented to be my wife. Is what? Yes, we're getting married, Hoss. And I would like you to give me away. But, Susie, you hardly know this man. He's almost a complete stranger. He's no stranger to me, Hoss. We love each other. What's all the big, big hurry about? Won't you wait until you're for sure, Susie? I'm sure now. The sooner the better, for Susan's sake. We're planning it for Saturday. Horse, will you be there? I'll let you know, Susie. I'll let you know. news. 
Congratulations. Pretty smart. Great big ranch. All that cattle. Look, what do you want, Thorne? I want my share. There aren't going to be any shares. I'm marrying Susan because I love her. Sure. And what's going to happen when the little lady finds out you can't make her walk? Listen, she's going to see through you before the ink's dried on that license. Maybe. Maybe she can be cured. I have a feeling sometimes at the right time with the right person, maybe I could cure her. Listen, you couldn't even cure a hangnail. But I'll tell you what you're going to do, Garth. You're going to go in and get some money from that little lady and you're going to give me my share. No, I'm not. The agreement we had before is all over. Is it? Yes. And suppose I tell the little lady the truth. What happens to you then? Never come back here again. I'll kill you. Son, I... I think you ought to do as Susan asks. Give her away at the wedding. How can she love him? She doesn't even know him. Oh, sometimes... Two people just look at each other once, and they're in love. What's really bothering you? Paul, I, I took Garth out there so he could make Susan walk again. Mm -hmm. I never figured on anything like this. Thorne, what are you doing here? I want to see you. Come in. Paul, this is this is Mr. Thorne, the feller I was telling you about that Mr. Garth healed downtown. Oh, yeah. I'm pulling up stakes and I'm leaving tonight, but before I go, there's something I want to tell you. Go on. That Garth, the great healer, he's a fake. What do you mean? Every time we go to a new town and start a meeting, he cures me. That sets up the suckers real good for him. Now he's going to marry that girl for her money and that big ranch her father left her. Paul, that explains it, don't you see? That explains everything, the marriage. You're going to go back out there and confront him with me. Oh, no. I ain't going to get myself killed. Thorne! Thorne! Hoss! Hoss. Well, you, you don't need him out there. But, Paul, I, I, I can't let her go through with this. Thorne being out there isn't going to help anything. Not if Susan really loves Garth. Oh, Paul, she can't love him. She's, she's in love with what, with what she thinks he is. Don't you see? He's got some kind of a hold on her or something. Paul, I can't let her go through with it. Yeah, maybe you're right. I... But you got to be real careful the way you break this to Susan. Yeah. I'll think of something. Celia, I'd like to talk to Susan. I just got her ready for bed. You can see her in the morning. Well, I think maybe she'd like to say goodnight to me. No, God, just a minute, please. I... If it's money you want, I can get it for you. I'm a fairly wealthy woman in my own right. Just why are you telling me this? Because I want you to leave here. Miss Celia, I'm in love with Susan. I'm going to marry her. I think the sooner you accept that, the sooner we'll all be happy here. You just want the ranch and her money. I don't believe you love her. 
You love her. Do you want to deprive her of happiness? Perhaps even the chance to walk again? I've been waiting for you to say good night. I'm glad. I, I wanted to talk to you, Susan. Why, is something wrong? No. How lovely you are. I love you so much. And I love you, Garth. Susan, why do we have to wait? Can't we be married tomorrow? I don't have any objections, Garth, but we haven't heard from Hoss yet. Is that so important? Do we have to wait for him? Well, it is rather important to me, Garth. We grew up together and we've always been such good friends. And a girl only gets married once and I... I would like to have him at my wedding. We can wait a few days, can't we? Susan, I'm afraid. Afraid? Of what? People, they... they don't understand me. They don't understand my abilities. I'm afraid they're going to try and keep us apart. Nothing will ever keep us apart, Garth. Nothing. Susan, this is so important to the both of us. Why... Why take a chance? Why run the risk of perhaps losing... Well, if we don't hear from Hoss by tomorrow, you can go and make arrangements for the next day. Will that be all right? Yeah. Yes, of course. Good night. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Well, good evening. I'd like to talk to you alone. Outside. What's in your mind, Mr. Carvin? What kind of man are you, Garth? Really? What, uh, what do you mean? I just had a little visit with your compadre, Thorne. Oh. Well, look, let me explain to you about Thorne. Don't bother. Don't bother. He gave me all the facts. Well, he gave you the facts, but I want to tell you the reasons behind those facts. I'd like to hear them. All right. Look, in order for me to be able to heal anybody, they have to have faith in me. They have to believe in me. Now, Thorne's little demonstration is like, a, like an incentive. With that evidence, false as it may be, they begin to believe in me. They begin to have faith in me. Like Susan. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I like Susan. But Thorne tells me you're a complete, a, a total fake. Now, what happens when Susan discovers that? What happens when she finds out you can't help her? But I, I believe I can. Susan isn't just following after me, begging to be cured. Look, I... I, I fall in love with Susan. Listen to me. You listen to me real good, Garth. I brought you to Susan. I'm responsible for any influence you might have over good or bad. If you're planning on marrying that little gal for this ranch and her money, I swear to you, I'll kill you. Well, then the only way to convince you and everyone else of my sincerity is to cure her before I marry, isn't that it? I don't want you to even try to do something you can't do. Not even try? And then after we're married, have everyone think I married her for her money? I don't want to hurt Garth. All right, all right, then you come with me, because I'm going to prove to you that I'm not what you suspect. Garth, what are you going to do? I'm going to cure her. Now. Miss Celia, I want you to get Susan. But she's asleep. Please. I think you best get her, ma'am. I heard your voices. I was so excited, I couldn't sleep. My horse, what are you doing here at this hour of the night? Garth, 
Is anything wrong? No, Susan, nothing's wrong. Oh. Mr. Cartwright doubts my sincerity. He doubts my ability to cure you. Is that true, Horse? Susan, I brought Mr. Garth here in the first place. I just want to be sure that he can help you. Oh, he's going to help me, Horse. But when, Susan, when? Garth will pick the time, Aunt Celia. I have picked the time, Susan. The time is now. Now? Yeah. But, Garth, you said... You said that I had to have complete faith first. That first we must marry. I know, Susan. But you do have faith in me, don't you? You see, Mr. Cartwright and your aunt, they question my motives. Oz? Aunt Celia? Susan, we must prove them wrong. We work together day and night, both of us, so hard for this moment. Ever since we first met each other, we have built up your strength in me. Your strength that I could make you walk. Now you must walk. I say, walk. I command you to walk. Susan, get up. God, I can't move my legs. I can't. Get up, Susan. I command you to. Get up and walk. I can't. I, God, command you to. That's about enough. No, wait, wait, I know I can. Garth! No, wait, I know I can! Let's see you help me with Susan. I believed I could cure her. It's 
all I can say. What are you doing way out here, little Joe? You're likely to get your brains out of walking in this sun. Uh, Krusty, you know I couldn't go through the day without my constitutional. Uh, my horse spooked up in the mines while I was checking fence. Probably halfway back to the Ponderosa by now. <laughs> well, I should have known you wouldn't be walking. You could avoid it. Well, come on aboard. Oh, of course, uh, when we get to Virginia City, I'm going to have to charge you for the 15 miles. Uh, anything's better than walking. What's the delay? Get along, driver. Stop the chatter. Driver, proceed immediately. All right, it's all right, folks. Just giving a friend a lift. Well, come on up here. I've been looking for someone to draw with anyway. Besides, once we get moving, it's going to be a mite cooler up here than in there. <laughs> I don't know. It's a pretty good draft when that guy opens his mouth. Now. Coach. Don't try nothing. You're a European passenger. I got no intention of trying anything. Hey, uh, look, gents, you may as well forget it and leave. We don't even have a money box aboard this trip. Flancho! I mean, shut up. Put on your gun! All right, everybody out of the coach. What's the meaning of this, sir? Uh, who are these men? Take it easy, Mr. Dubose. This is what's known out here in the West as a stage holdup. This is outrageous. Driver, I demand you do something. 
<laughs> With those guns pointing at me, Mr. DeBosa, I've done just about everything I aim to. No, Senor Duval, do not be foolish. He's taking the dowry. Without it, I am penniless. Better penniless than dead. Papa, don't be rash. Ricardo is right. place to lie close in Virginia City. Dr. Easy. Fortunately, appearances were deceiving. Your father got was not near as badly hurt as we first thought. Ah, that is good news. Little Joe, it's a wise move on your part to bring him here instead of the longer ride to Virginia City. He's regained consciousness then. Oh, yes, he certainly has. As a matter of fact, I had to give him a powder to keep him quiet. <laughs> Little lady, your father certainly has gumption. You know he's just aching to get up and take after those road agents. He, uh, he wants to bring back some sort of a chest. I told him it was silly. It's not silly. It's my diary. Ricardo, what are you waiting for? Why do you not go after those bandits? But, my dearest one, I was so concerned about your father. Now, I will go after those bandidos. Oh, Don Ricardo, that, that isn't necessary. My sons are out scouting the countryside right now. I'm sure they'll catch up with them very soon. In the meanwhile, Ben, Mr. Dubois must remain quiet. He's got to stay in bed at least three or four days. And I've got to get back to town. I'll look in on your father tomorrow. Thank you, Doctor. Not at all. Bye. Excuse me, I must go to my father. Oh, uh, mademoiselle, your father is resting now. Don't you think it might be better not to disturb him? Why don't you sit down here? We'll all have some refreshment. I want to thank you, monsieur. You have been very kind to extend us your hospitality. Well, I'm only sorry that you had such a bad experience. But our home is open to you, and I hope you'll feel as comfortable as possible. You are most gracious, senor. Not oh, we, we are all very much in your debt. Not at all. Ricardo, what will happen if my diary will not be found? Mademoiselle, you... you might have lost your lives. No, 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 you, you do not seem to understand, senor. You see, the dowry was worth... Almost $100,000. Well, uh, well, didn't you think it was kind of risky carrying such a fortune all the way from New Orleans? We planned for the marriage to take place at a mission on my ranchero in California. It's an old family custom. As for the wedding, well, senor, the dowry must be there for everyone to see. Oh, I, uh, I didn't realize that the dowry had to be at the wedding ceremony. It's an ancient custom for both our families. You'll pardon me for saying so, senor, but under those circumstances, I thought you'd be much more perturbed over the theft of the chest. I do not wear my emotions on my sleeve, senor Cartwright. I am perturbed, deeply perturbed. Oh, not over the loss of the dowry itself. I'm a wealthy man in my own right. But unless the dowry is recovered or replaced, the custom of my family will forbid me to marry my lovely Michelle. Just loving the girl isn't enough. Love? Love is the least important thing in a marriage between two families such as ours. Oh, I see. You don't love her. Uh, Joseph. I did not say that, my friend. Please, Ricardo. Must we drag such intimate matters into the open? Uh, Mr. Bois is absolutely correct, Joseph. This is none of our concern. Uh, Mademoiselle, perhaps you would like to rest. Your room is upstairs right next to your father's. I'd be happy to show Mr. Water a room. Merci, monsieur. Uh, Don Ricardo, your room is right over here. Oh, gracias. No, I'm not tired. Uh, but I would like to use this time to explore your ranchero. I'm sure that uh, Joseph would be very happy to show you around just as soon as you're ready. Yes, that would be a wise idea. Your son seems most eager to help. Um, would you, uh, let's have some brandy. Well, senor, I'm ready. You and your father have been most gracious hosts. I'm hoping to learn from your advanced techniques. Uh, we better get started. Oh, it's not necessary for you to waste your time, senor. I'm perfectly capable of finding my own way. Well, are you sure you can make it all right by yourself? Positive, amigo. Just point me in the direction to your branding corral. Anything you say, senor? 
Adios. He's doing very well for a man who had a bullet in the morning yesterday. Why shouldn't I do well? With such friends as you have turned out to be and your valiant son risking their lives to recover an old man's treasure. I would be very <laughs> ungrateful to do otherwise. One more. One more, Papa. Merci. It's all finished. Oh, I'll take it down to the kitchen. Good. You have a very devoted daughter. Oh, yes. Ah. Well, it's good to see you looking so much better. Thank you. First time we've had to talk. I don't know how to thank you. Well, the mere presence of a gentleman such as yourself and such a lovely daughter is uh, quite sufficient, thanks. Oh, Michelle is lovely. Yes. She's like her mother was. Huh? Uh, she died when Michelle was a baby. Perhaps it is just as well, for she didn't see my once ample fortune wiped out completely. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, foolish investments dissipated it completely. Everything except the dowry. I was determined not to touch that. And I was equally determined that Michelle should have a proper marriage. Uh, my family is one of the finest ones in New Orleans, directly descended from the French royalty. And uh, Senor Fernandez? He is directly descended from the Spanish royalty. And when Fernandez told me about his vast ranchero here in the West, it was obvious that he can provide for my daughter properly. And uh, her dowry <laughs> pleased him very much, too. Why is a dowry so important to a man of wealth such as uh, Senor Fernandez? How can you describe the sky to a blind man? <laughs> 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 Our customs are ingrained in us. All I can say that dowry is a, a, a very important element in a marriage between families such as Dubois and Fernandez. Oh, I've, I've been making you talk much too much, and I'm terribly sorry. You should be resting now. Oh, no, no, no. I no, hope no, you rest no. very comfortably. Thank you. You are very kind. Not at all. seems fair. There's only three of them. That's right, brother. I tell you what, you take the one with the bad wing and I'll take the other two. Well, I was thinking it ought to be the other way around. You're surrounded. Drop your guns.
We look nice working there, Adam? Yeah, take a good look, because it's a rare sight indeed. Very, very funny. Hey, you got the chest. What happened to the bandits? Adam, boss? Yeah. What happened? We got the jewels back, Paul, but we missed the thieves. Well, I wouldn't worry about them as long as we got, got the girl's dowry back. Yeah, but suppose the dowry turned out to be worthless. Now, what does that mean? Well, take a look at that. It's chipped. What? Beautiful workmanship. These jewels look like glass. What? They're imitations. Joe, is this the very same chest they took off the stagecoach? I can't be sure. It looks like the same one. Well, it's one sure way to find out. Let's ask him. Now, let's, uh, let's keep what we know to ourselves for the time being. And why don't we fix the hinge on this chest so Mr. Dubois won't know that anybody's tampered with him, huh? Now, let's get in the barn. Peculiar, ain't it? Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, though, about, uh, about what Fernandez said about no dowry, no wedding. Yeah? I just wonder if uh, if he finds out the dowry's a fake. Maybe there'll still be no wedding. Now listen, Joe. If you got any notions about that gal, you forget them. Them Spaniards has got a temper plumb up to there. He'll tear you apart if you even wink that gal. Where not there, senor? All right. Where? I have been inspecting your uh, irrigation system. Ingenioso. I shall have my payance installed one like it on my own ranchero. Thank you. This is my brother, Hoss. Hi. Ah, the brothers who pursued the bandidos, eh? That's right. You were unsuccessful, eh? Well, not exactly. We got the chest back. And the bandidos? Well, it seemed like they were a little more interested in saving their hides than they was the chest. Well, I shall never be able to thank you enough for your heroic efforts. If it hadn't been for you and your brother, the dowry would have been lost forever. Well, if you'll excuse me now, I must go and tell Michelle the good news. I wonder how he's going to feel when he finds out those jewels are phony. I don't know. I don't know how he's going to feel if he catches you fooling around with that gal. You leave her alone, you hear? Yes, sir. My dear Michelle, have you heard the news? The dowry has been recovered. Oh, Ricardo, marvelous. Now we can get married. Does it not please you? Hmm? Oh, of course, of course. Now our plans can proceed without delay. Ricardo, ever since we have left New Orleans, you scarcely seem to see me. You go for rides by yourself, you take walks alone. Does it not occur to you that, uh, that I might like to accompany you? I have much on my mind. Still, my dear, there will be lots of times for rides and walks on my own ranchero after we are married. Sometimes I think it would have been much nicer if we had been married in New Orleans. Well, it is as I told you before. The padre, who lives at the mission near my ranchero, is an old friend of the family. Well, he would be heartbroken if anybody but he officiated at my wedding. Now, you really must excuse me, my dear. I must not keep your father waiting. Does it not matter if I am kept waiting? Petulance does not become you, my flower. Soon you are going to be the donna of my ranchero, and you must learn to be gracious at all times. Now, I must go to tell your father about the recovery of the dowry. I don't mind at all. I don't want to be a bother to you. Oh, how can you bother me? <laughs> Are you sure I don't bother you? Well, you know, I'm not exactly sure. You want to hand me another spike? 
What's a spike? It beats heck out of me, huh? Ricardo, fortune has smiled on an old man. The dowry has been recovered. Mr. Cartwright just brought it back to me. Yes, I came by this afternoon to tell you, but you were asleep. Well, indeed, we are all fortunate. We're all fortunate. And especially to see you recovering so rapidly, Senor Dubois. Well, the Dubois family is not only distinguished, but hardy. Your marriage to Michel will produce children who will go strong and tall. And I am going to name my first son, Alexander. Please do not speak of such things. Why not, my child? Because Ricardo seems to regret his pledge of betrothal to me. No, that is not true. You are a prize to be cherished above all others. A man could have a wife no more charming or beautiful. If you find me so attractive, why do you not suggest a stroll in the moonlight? It's a lovely night and it's proper. We are engaged. Well, because to walk in the moonlight with one such as you is too much temptation for a mortal man like myself. Bravo, Ricardo. You are a true gentleman. The gentle part is correct, Papa. Besides, I need my rest. Tomorrow morning I plan to leave early for my ranchero. Leave? Uh, without us? Well, uh, you will be unable to travel for a week. Besides, I grow greatly worried about this absence from my ranchero. I fear that the peons are growing lazy, neglectful. You and Michel can follow later and I will have things ready for your arrival. Oh, you are talking logically, of course. We will talk about this further in the morning before you leave. Right now, I am in need of rest. Of course, Senor Dubois. Until tomorrow. My dreams will be only of you. He is indeed an aristocrat, Michel. I am afraid you offended him. I meant to. He's so cold, so aloof. <laughs> Perhaps your young and romantic heart expects too much. Perhaps you're right, Papa. And what's more important, he can offer you what I was unable to give you in recent years. Wealth. Security. Servants to do your bidding. And security for you too, Papa. This is one thing I really like Ricardo for. He insisted that you come and live with us. <sighs> it means nothing. You do to me, Papa. <sighs> Check outside. You certainly couldn't have missed him by more than an inch or two. 
But I did miss. I, I... Papa, Papa, please don't get excited. Well, the bandits are trying to steal my money, my fortune, the only fortune I had. And I'm not to be excited. Now, uh, Monsieur Dubois, Michelle is right. You must not get excited. The important thing is that your chest is safe. That gun, I reckon they got away. Well, we didn't have much chance of catching them in the dark anyway. Why she let him get away? Well, you're absolutely right. I'll tell you what, while Hoss and I get some sleep, you can have your opportunity. Now, they've tried twice to get the dowry, and chances are they'll try a third time, so why don't you just stay here and keep a uh, vigilant watch, all right? Let's go. You yes, asked for that, little brother. Leave him out there till he gets moon blind. Well, I take it you found absolutely nothing, huh? Uh, you got a way slick as a whistle for. Pretty odd. Well, I'm a brave bunch, sneaking in the house the way they did. Yeah, I bet they'd be fist fighting mad if they discovered there wasn't nothing in that chest but a bunch of phony imitations. No, you don't get my point. They could have been given information about the chest being on the stagecoach. Yeah, but how did they know the chest was under Dubois' bed? Yeah. You know, someone had to tell them where the dowry chest was kept. Paul, don't look at me. What about Dubois himself? Oh, I don't think so, no. Now, whether Dubois knows that the chest is worthless or not, what would he gain by arranging to have it stolen? Well, it leaves Ricardo. Yeah, but why would he want to steal it? He's going to get the dowry anyhow as soon as he marries Michelle. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, there are only two things for sure. We know the chest is worthless. The bandits think it contains a fortune. Well, what do you think we ought to do? Nothing. Not right now. You two boys go to bed. Aren't you going to go to bed? It's kind of late, Paul. No, I'm not going to bed yet. Well, with, uh, Pa thinking, and uh, Joe guarding. Uh, what's the left for me and you to do? Not a bad burn thing. Let's go to bed. Right. Like. Well, they do not give up easily, this man, but I imagine after two failures, they will not try again. Do you really think so, Ricardo? Well, at least we are assured of sleep without further disturbance. I understand our host has posted guards around the house to keep us protected. For the second time, I shall say good night and also add my heartfelt respect for your vigilance and bravery. Good night. Excuse me, Papa. Wait, Ricardo. I hope that what has happened has changed your mind about going on ahead without us. Papa, in his weakened condition, shouldn't be left alone with the responsibility of the dowry. You are right, of course. No wonder I am so taken with you, my darling. I will wait and we'll travel to California together. What's wrong with Ricardo? Why? Do you think he no longer loves me? Of course he loves you, my petit. But just now he refused to kiss me. Is something the matter with me? There's nothing the matter with you, my petit. Papa, you should go to sleep now. It's bad for you to stay up late. Come in. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Come in. Well, how are we feeling? Mr. Cartwright, will you please see that he goes to sleep? Miss Dubois, I shall be most pleased to see that he goes to sleep. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, Papa. Good night, Good night. Good night. I just drove by to make sure that everything was all right. Of course I'm all right. You like it? Beautiful, beautiful craftsmanship. Thank you. I've made it myself. You made this yourself? We, oui, monsieur. The creation of fine handpieces is my hobby. 
It was for many years. I gave quite a few to my friends. Really? scare you. With all the excitement, I couldn't sleep. How's your father? Oh, he's fine. He's sleeping now. Thank you. That's good. I don't think they'll be back tonight. I hope not. Such a pretty night. Yes, it is. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? No. How can a beautiful girl like you want to marry a man who's more interested in your dowry than he is in you? Sometimes I do wonder if Ricardo is more interested in the dowry than me. Well, I know what I'd do if I was in his place. What? Why did you do it? Why did I do it? You wanted to see what I'd do if I was in his place. You know, Ricardo's never kissed me. Well, that's Ricardo's problem. Uh -uh. Hmm? Ricardo is there. Yeah, Ricardo is where? Right behind you. Buenas noches, Michelle, Senor Cartwright. Ricardo, please forgive me. Forgive I... you, forgive you, forgive you for what? It's moonlight, and you are very beautiful. And Senor Cartwright is a mortal man. That's a Spanish temper? I've never been so insulted. I still don't know why she wants to marry him. to see you. Oh, fine. I always stop by here while I'm swinging back on my return trip. Just yeah. uh, drink one of these and get the dust out of my gullet. <laughs> Say, I want to thank you for taking care of little Joe the way you did. Oh, oh. any time, any time. Oh, uh, Ben, I was wondering about that old fella. You know, the uh, one that got shot in the stagecoach hold up, that Mr. Uh... Oh, you mean Monsieur Dubois? Yeah, yeah. How is he? Oh, just fine, just fine. Come along real good. Oh, peculiar thing about that hold up. You know the other fella, the uh, Spanish dude, the one that's going to marry this Mr. Uh, Dubois' daughter? Oh, you mean Don Ricardo Fernandez? Mm. <laughs> well, he's really something. <laughs> now, what does that mean? Well, he was always talking about this big spread he has at Travis Wells in California. Yeah? <laughs> uh, well, I was kind of curious about it, so I detoured the stage a couple of miles just to take a look at it. Huh? Found out a funny thing. Well, what did you find out? Well, you know that spread he says he owns? You mean he doesn't own it? Oh, no, he, he, he owns it all right. But the funny thing is, though, that... Well, well what's so funny about it? Now, look, would you mind piping down and let me finish my story? Well, I wish you would finish it. Well, I will as soon as I wipe some more of this alkali out of my throat. Hi. 
want to apologize about last night. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to slap you. I was angry with Don Ricardo. I... I'm not going to marry him. I wouldn't marry a man who takes so lightly finding his intended bride in the arms of another man. Well, I have to admit, I... Uh, I wouldn't have taken the whole thing so lightly myself. I'm sure you wouldn't have. As I said, Don Ricardo has no feelings for me. Does he know yet that you've changed your mind about marrying? No, not yet. I'll tell him when I see him. Do you know where he is? Well, I imagine he's riding around the ranch as usual. Alone as usual. Well, I'll go and tell Papa about this. Well, I shall never tire of riding around your magnificent Ponderosa. I have learned much. For some reason unknown to myself, I've offended you. I offer my apologies, whatever the reasons. Your words merely add further insult, Don Ricardo. But it doesn't matter now. I have something to tell you. And I shall give you my undivided attention, my dove. But before you speak, there is something that I'm forced to do. Why did you do it? I've decided, after all, Senor Joseph Cartwright, that your indiscretion of last night was indeed a serious insult to my name. All right, what do you want to do about it? I demand satisfaction. Oh, that's fine. Why don't you step out of the way? Okay, how do you want to get it? Like this. Oh, like that, huh? about. He's going to get hurt. Well, I wouldn't worry. Uh, Joe can take care of himself. I'm not talking about Joe. I'm talking about Don Ricardo. Get that nice suit all dirty. Well, that is life. It's a question of honor. Your brother kissed me last night. That yeah, figures.
It's, it's not over yet. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Opponent, Senor Joseph. It, it took your beating gracefully. Oh, yeah, I thought I did. Without the gloves, you'd have never taken it. Well, what's going on here? Well, it was a pretty good fight, Pa. Uh, Ricardo here was uh, defending his honor, and uh, little brother was uh, defending himself. Uh, sorry you and Horse missed it. Where is Horse? Oh, well, uh, things were getting kind of dull around here, so uh, he took himself a little nap. Oh, he did, huh? Monsieur Cartwright, it was a terrible fight. Oh, but my Ricardo, oh, he was magnificent. Well, I wasn't so bad myself. Your son is a worthy opponent, senor. We fought to an honorable draw. Well, isn't that interesting? While you two were fighting and you were watching and Haas was sleeping, I saw three men riding up with a dowry. My dowry? Yeah. Michel. Your dowry was torn. My congratulations, Senor Fernandez. Your robbery was finally a success. My robbery? Your loose words are insulting, Senor. Oh, Senor Ricardo. Let's not have another fight. You finally succeeded in having Michelle's dowry stolen. Very clever scheme. What do you mean? Uh, well, Senor Fernandez. Ricardo, did you steal my dowry? The man is a charlatan, a liar, a thief. Men without honor. Papa, please. Ricardo, why? It is simple and shameful. I do not own a rich and vast ranchero. There are just a poor few acres. There is no big hacienda. Just an old sod hut. I don't understand. You lied to me. You said that you loved me. That is the one truth in the whole miserable business. When I met you in New Orleans and conceived the idea of the dowry, I had no feeling. But on the trip across the country, watching you, speaking to you, I fell in love. And it's a fine way to make love, lying and stealing. Well, I tried to call off the robbery, but my men wouldn't hear of it when I met them on my rides around the Ponderosa. They were eager for the famous Dubois jewels. I tried to avoid you, to be called to you, so that you would not be hurt when the marriage was canceled. But my pride could not permit me to do that. I understand, Ricardo. The most important thing to me now is that you love me and that you're sorry about what happened. I love you. Michelle, love. How can you love such a man? Yes. How can you do that? After all, you know about me. I do what my heart tells me. Well, you must lose this love. With all this foolishness, I'm going to go to prison. Well, that uh, it kind of depends upon whether Senor Dubois is going to uh, press charges. Papa, please forgive him. Please. Never. Monsieur Cartwright, I demand you notify the sheriff at once. Michelle. May I speak with your father alone, please? That will do no good. When he's like this, it's impossible. Please. Well, that's the way she goes. Monsieur Dubois. 
You just heard your daughter say that she loved Don Ricardo. Ah, love, 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 that's all I hear. He was after her dowry. Well, he confessed as much. You know, I have a bit of a confession to make myself. I, uh, I looked into your dowry chest and saw all those magnificent jewels. They're just beautiful. One thing that bothered me, though, I, th I thought that the, the settings were not quite as, 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 as fine as they might have been. You, you mean the settings? <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, I think they are as good as any I've ever seen. No, I, I, I felt that they were inferior compared to the jewels themselves. Okay? What do you mean? Oh, they are magnificent, uh, Mr. Cartwright. I am an artist. Yes, you are. Very well. I utilize my skill in making fine guns to devise a fake dowry for Michelle. She needed one to be married properly. Oh, I wanted to tell them later on, sometimes that. Uh... I'm a foolish old man who couldn't even be successfully dishonest. Well, if I have to start to work like a peon in the fields, let us get on with it. Oh, remember, you're all invited to the wedding celebration at my ranchero in two weeks. Uh, can I kiss the bride? Joseph? I can't kiss the bride. <laughs> you're gonna meet that stage in Virginia City, you better get going. Have a good trip. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. 